G4, hands on, and I can already tell you, it's absolute fire. Up next. It is an absolute gift to be able to have hands-on time with the LG G4 as well as the QNED 90T Mini LED which you'll see in the next video which was very impressive. But seeing the G4 at CES was treat enough to be part of that exclusive event but to be here at LG to be able to actually put the G4 through some of its paces is something I need you guys to see. Hands-on time with these TVs is absolutely amazing and I wanna be able to show you a little bit of that today. Thank you so much for watching. All right, guys, let's do it. We're looking at the LG G4 at 65 inches filmed at LG's headquarters. Checking out the design very quickly, very streamlined, very small silver bezel, which is barely visible in a bright room, let alone a dark room where it literally disappears. Screen uniformity on this 65 inch is nearly flawless. Didn't see any problems at all. Same thickness from top to bottom. Four full bandwidth HDMI 2.1, capable of 144 hertz gaming. Absolutely beautiful display. 55 inch and 65 inch come with a stand this year. First time they're doing that. Otherwise you have the gapless wall mount which looks unreal when it's flush against the wall. Unlike other OLEDs, which are thinner at the top, that have the large back where all the internals are located. A lot of this will be in a very bright room. You can see the TVs behind me. However, the reflection handling is not bad. TVs behind me are very bright. Let's go through some of the settings, just showing you the different presets. We're not gonna deep dive too much in this video as I'm gonna see this in two or three weeks at Value Electronics, where I'll have a ton of time with probably the 65 again, maybe even the 77, the 83 I think is due out a little bit later in the year, or at least in the next few months. Like always, LG's flexibility of image. A lot of the conversation about LG's G4 has been about it being brighter. To me, that's the last thing to even hype up. It's really the processing, the detail, how clean this image is. Now you're seeing our good friend, Jennifer Gala's content. Shout out to Jennifer Gala and her second channel, HCR Super Channel. Check her out in the link below. But they ran us through several demos of movies. There are several additions to the entire uh, settings menu, especially when it comes to their AI settings. Motion being a big addition this year, though the motion was flawless out of the box, which you'll see shortly, and some of this demo material. 
but that AI upscaling have more toggles this year that do even more. And there's something that you can actually see on screen. Which again, we'll deep dive into when we see the panel in a few weeks. But more than anything, it's fine detail. It's the crispiness of image without noise. It's the smoothness of the motion. Now I mentioned this is in a bright room. It'll get dark at the end. And I'll go through the settings yet again, just to show you the presets. But I was hyped to the G4 again when I saw it at CES. Even then, that was more about numbers and more about how bright will it be. They're all pretty bright, but it's the processing I'm looking forward to. The processing is what's really going to set it aside or set it apart from last year's excellent G3. As I move into the sound part. So have your picture wizard there. But the big difference here is in your dynamic tone mapping preset. You're able to disable it, go into a performance or professional mode where you can control the curve if that content is mastered at a higher peak brightness. And while it may be very technical, I was assured that anyone can really use it. That kind of flexibility. There's also flexibility with motion. There's also a way to choose what you're going to focus on if something in the foreground is to be faded out or something in you know, the background is to be faded out. You can actually choose what you want to focus on and the AI will do that. Your preferences are so important. We now have Dolby Vision having a filmmaker mode. And there was an excellent, I wish I could have filmed it. There was an excellent presentation from Dolby Vision. For many of you that are concerned about Dolby Vision, LG has the best Dolby Vision in the business. Best implementation by a lot. And talking with Dolby Vision, it's a long partnership they've had for a very long time. And they're not going anywhere, thus having Dolby Vision filmmaker mode. What I like about the Dolby Vision on the LG panels in the last few years and this year is still flexibility of image, still having access to a lot of the controls to change the image the way you like. But if you're worried about Dolby Vision implementation, LG is the go-to. Also working with NVIDIA G-Sync 144Hz, Dolby Vision Gaming, HGIG. And being that the HDMIs are connected right to the body, there shouldn't be dropouts of any kind. To me, it's the processing as I've mentioned many times. That's all I saw when I saw these demos and when I saw the real footage. Now in the footage that I can't show you that they were demoing, it was really about the retaining color where it was brighter than the other OLEDs that it was being compared against the leading OLEDs. They had the top leaders there. And not only was the G4 brighter, but it retained more shadow detail and more color, which was really impressive. as well as how the G4 retained its brightness as far as dimming. And with all this processing, with everything that you can add, you can toggle it, you can disable it. So any extra sharpness, anything that you're worried about there, the director's intent is definitely part of it. I recently did an interview with LG's Greg Lee. He is the senior product trainer I'll link that below. Check it out if you want to know more about LG's entire lineup, including the C4 and the QNED lineup. Absolutely stunning. Now for me, the G4 even coming from CES is my pick for TV of the year. Keep in mind for the Value Electronics TV shootout, I simply host the stream. I have no saying what the judges pick, but with the A95L yes, last, from last year probably competing 
and the S95D having like that matte finish, I can't see anything stopping the G4 in the OLED category. Going through the different presets, again, flexibility of image. And if you go back to the interview with Greg Lee, they are one of the most accurate out of the box. With that performance dynamic tone mapping, you're able to do a lot yourself. WebOS has been updated as well. I will show you that when I get the panel. As well as gaming at 144 hertz with the NVIDIA 4090 GPU. Now you may see reflections. The reflection handling is actually quite good. Display looks very high end. Again, this is a very bright room. And the TVs behind me are very bright. But it's the clarity. And as I mentioned, the screen uniformity was excellent. Now this is their panel <laughs> that they're showing. I'm sure they checked it out. Going back to the demos they did with the certain movies even in very dark rooms where they had lights showing the g4 held not only was it brighter but it had more color so it's just not about pushing the whites to make it brighter many of you are afraid that because the display is brighter or maybe brighter than ever that it's just pushing white that it just drowns it out which is not the case But LG's motion has always been excellent. This year, it's definitely a clear step up, which you can also customize. And we'll go into those AI. Usually the AI upscaler is just one toggle. There are a couple toggles here. What I like about that is you can make it look as natural as you like per film, instead of, uh, you know, where that might not work for an older film, something very clean, Avatar, Pacific Rim, you might want to make that look as sharp and, and add motion to it to make it three-dimensional. And so many of you always ask, does it look 3D? Absolutely. Also keep in mind, the display being brighter than ever, it's actually more efficient than ever. Don't worry, they have the five-year screen warranty. Burnin is pretty much a thing of the past. And as Greg Lee mentioned, LG definitely performed the best in a ratings longevity tests. But even in this bright room, it leaps off the screen. Now changing nothing with motion. There is no stutter, there's no judder. So punchy, so clean, so detailed. Now the G3 from last year was excellent and right up there with the best OLEDs in the world. But now we're talking about a completely different animal. Not because it's brighter, but because of the processor. Alpha 11 is legit. And it is doing so much on the fly without any added lag or latency, not just in gaming, but in what it does to the image in terms of watching movies and shows. I'll have more literature on that when the TVs actually launch. There's a lot with WebOS that can be customizable. Now there's a chop chat bot which can help probably elderly people figure out which picture settings or not just elderly people, but people that are new to TVs, help them design their TV, their interface, what settings to change. Something's too dim or too bright. You can just ask the TV. It'll tell you what settings to change. Actually teaching them on the fly. Look at the motion. So smooth, no artifacting. You can put the camera right up to the screen. You'll see that a moment when this bird flies across the screen. Or my head flying across the screen. So smooth.
what are your guys thoughts on the G4 or LG altogether? As I mentioned, for me, last year's Sony A95L Master Series, phenomenal TV, excellent processor with XR Clear, Samsung S95C, amazing. G3 was right there, better in some cases. But now with the added processor, it's gonna be very, very interesting. And with the ability to toggle some of that on and off, those of you that want director's intent or filmmaker's intent might be more comfortable with this choice. You add in the gaming features, 144 hertz to the body of the panel, no dropouts, G-Sync. Shut the lights off here. Super impressed with it. Cannot wait to get my hands on it. And as those of you that know, I have an 83-inch C1 sitting right in front of me. Almost certain that this will replace that as my personal display that I game on every single day. It's that big a jump for me. As you can see, the silver bezel literally disappears. Camera is just left the way it is. Now quickly, we're gonna look at a quick comparison to last year's QD OLED, which is the S90C, not the 95C. Now I'm not doing this as a comparison that you should really look at too much simply because neither one of them are calibrated, but just going by preset by preset, it wasn't about the brightness of the G. It was the clarity of things in the background. It's the detail as I switch the Samsung into similar presets, whether it's standard, movie, cinema. Regardless of the color and which one's brighter, it's more about the detail that I saw on the G4. That what I saw in the background was more detailed and what I saw in the foreground was more detailed. Without going into the settings of each one, they are set in the same way for dynamic tone mapping or tone mapping, I should say, is set the same. But I didn't want to do Spears and Munsell and make them look exactly the same. But I want to go through these couple presets on this particular scene just because the detail really pops on the G4. Now you'll see my partner in crime, FOMO and I, going against or uh, at Value Electronics with the S95D going against the G3. So you'll see plenty of comparisons there. Both those panels will be calibrated. I want to quickly just show you the comparisons going in and out of the presets. Those of you that know me, I like accuracy, but I want to make sure each of you see the preset you want to see. LG is also perhaps the best in the business with their standard and vivid presets, where even Greg Lee from LG said you can use the vivid preset in a bright room the contact, or to combat the glare. Change it to warm, drop the sharpness, and it's something that even a regular person can watch and enjoy vivid. Very flexible image. Now, in closing, it's my favorite TV of the year already. Now it's the first TV I'm actually, well, it's not really the first TV I spent time with. I am under NDA for other things, but I love what I see from the G4. It's my early pick for TV of the year. Think of me as a sports caster. I can pick what I think will win. LG's processing is on point. It was always good, but now it is a large jump. I think you guys will be very happy with it. But the brightness, it being brighter, is really the last thing to focus on. It's the processor that's the big jump. G3, if you're looking for something that's amazing and you like LG, go there. I can't wait to see the C4. But the G4 is where the new processor is. Brighter, more vibrant, more flexibility of image and tone mapping and motion settings. Upscaling. These are the things that we should be focusing on because these are the big differences that the engineers put the work into. Again, as you can see in the dark, silver bezel, no problem. 
And as a small YouTuber, being included in these events is massive for our little community. So those of you watching live that are part of our community, I love you guys. Thank you so much for hanging out with me in these um, premiere videos and making the channel and community what it is. I don't have this access without you guys, without you guys being positive and being so helpful and knowledgeable. Special thanks to LG, Greg Lee. Check out his interview. Special thanks to Don. Don, my boy, who got me hooked up with all this access. David and the rest of the engineering team. Hopefully you had the same feeling I did playing with this TV in person. All right, guys. Thank you so much for watching. I'm Brian from Brian's Tech Therapy. Have a great night. Have a great day. Take care. Love you guys. Let's burn out.